When given the choice between mod and stock, I usually pick mod. Now there are a couple reasons for this, including but not limited to I like having more power than I need, and I like taking cool lines that you usually can't take with a mo the stock car. However, the main reason why I don't run stock is the cost, as stock can get ludicrously expensive very quickly. Back in the day before I was born, stock was considered more of a beginner and budget friendly class. However, as I'm sure you guys know these days, that's very much not the case as some of the best drivers in the world, or best drivers in the country at least, are stock only drivers. Now I'm not here to debate as to whether or not stock should be a beginner class or not, as that would take a very long time and I'm sure to make someone upset. However, in this video I will be taking the time to highlight just how expensive stock can get when you get into the really competitive space of it. Now before we begin, I'd like to thank a few of my sponsors, starting with EuroRC. If you guys live in the UK or especially the EU and you want to buy some kits or perhaps something like an RTR if that's your thing, Feel free to go to EuroRC.com and use code ROACHRC5 to save a little bit on checkout. Secondly, we have CowRC. They have some of the best RC cleaning products on the market today, so if you want to save a little bit on your next purchase from them, be sure to use ROACHRC all caps at checkout and you'll save a little bit on checkout. And lastly, we have A-Main Hobbies. Anything you guys buy using the affiliate link in the description below or in this affiliate link right here will directly support me as well. With that out of the way, Let's empty our bank accounts again. Okay, so if you live outside the United States and happen to live or happen to live in a place that doesn't run stock at all, you may be scratching your head, probably not. But if you so, I'm going to explain it anyway. Basically stocks means whatever turn motor you're allowed to use. So for example, two wheel drive buggy has two main different stock classes, 21.5 turn motors and 17.5 turn motors. For wheeler or four wheel drive buggy, uh, stadium truck and short course truck, the general consensus is usually 13.5. The ESCs are also put into what's called blinky mode where they are not allowed to run either turbo or boost timing. Outside of that and the 1,474 gram weight limit, it's pretty much fair game as to what you do to your buggy and this can create quite the rabbit hole. Let's start with anything and everything that can reduce your rotating mass. This can be done a number of different ways, and a good example would be a slipper eliminator or a lightweight slipper system. A few different companies make lightweight slippers like Avid, but generally the lighter the better. The same thing can be said about the internal gears as well. Depending on what platform you run, there will be different types of internal gears you can buy that will drastically reduce the internal rotating mass of the car. For four-wheel drive cars, you can run plastic ring and pinion gears in the transmission, along with plastic internal gears for the diffs. For two-wheel drive cars, this includes cut internal idler gears and diff gears. Of course, running all these things can reduce your internal resistance, but also your internal durability. Seriously, do not run these parts unless you plan to only use your car for stock racing. If you run them in mod, you will start stripping gears very quickly. Also, the aforementioned slipper eliminator is very good for carpet and very high dyed clay. However, I only recommend it for those two surfaces as loose dirt. Yeah, it's not going to work. I also only recommend it for 17.5 turn motors. 13.5 is really pushing it. The next thing to reduce would be your rolling resistance on your car. And this can be done by upgrading your bearings. This once again comes down to what surface you're driving on. If you're running on pretty much any dirt track, especially outdoor sandy or loamy stuff, I wouldn't recommend a full ceramic bearing kit at all. Bearings that come in most kits these days are usually very greasy and oily for a very good reason. Quite simply, it's to make sure they last a long time and don't need to be replaced after a few race days after racing on dirt. Ceramic bearings in general won't last long without proper maintenance or if you're running on loose farm dirt. This is why hybrid kits are a thing. For people who only run on dirt but still want to reduce their rolling resistance, they will usually only replace the enclosed driveline bearings while keeping the bearings on the outside like the hub areas and front spindles as that's where you're going to reduce the most amount of rolling resistance. 
There are a few different brands that do bearing kits like Fast Eddie, JT, Shell, and Witch Racing, so I'll link a few that you can grab in the description below. Once we get all this done, we can start looking at a few different smaller things to reduce our overall weight by a lot. There are a few different ways to do this, and to be honest, none of them are really cheap. Are you beginning to sense a theme here? The first and most popular of these upgrades would be a titanium screw kit. Now, titanium screws have a few different benefits over the kit supplied steel ones. For one, titanium is much harder than steel, so you don't have to worry too much about stripping them out as much as the waste off your steel screw. Secondly, you don't have to worry about corrosion as you would with steel as titanium doesn't really rust. Now this is most needed on outdoor tracks where the cars are more subject to the elements compared to if they are only run indoors. Now if you only want the rust free properties of running titanium screws but you don't want to spend that level of money, I'd go with the set of stainless steel screws instead. Much cheaper and they won't rust. The biggest thing about titanium screws however is the fact that they are much lighter than steel screws are. These same rules can be applied to titanium turnbuckles as well. The only issue with titanium screw kits is the fact that they can be very, very costly. A titanium screw kit for this B6.4 can cost upwards of $100. Another upgrade you can go for if you're feeling confident in your driving ability and you happen to run an associated car would be to run a few plastic carbon parts on your car. Now carbon plastic may be a tad bit more brittle than the softer plastics that come in the kit for associated cars, but they are also lighter. So if you don't plan on crashing during a race and you consider yourself a good driver, maybe some carbon plastic parts will be for you. Now there are quite a few more different things you can do to save weight like aftermarket chassis, carbon fiber side guards in the case of four-wheel drive buggies, and lightweight bodies and such. However, at a certain point you need to add all of that weight back somehow to get back to the 1474 gram weight requirement for two-wheel drive buggies, and well, any other weight requirement for other classes. There are certain ways you can do this, but the biggest and most popular way is to either run a bigger battery or a regular battery with weights underneath. This way you can get all of that weight as low and as central as possible to promote rotation in corners. You can also put that weight in other places should you need to. Now I didn't want to just get my own opinion on this video, so I decided to talk to two of the best stock racers in the country, Kyle Goh and Talon Henley, and here's what they said they tend to run on both of their cars. For Kyle, his TLR car runs in terms of upgrades, ceramic transmission bearings, titanium screw kits and turnbuckles, light and transmission gears along with a thick 4400 mAh Exalt battery, Exalt 17.5 gold standard motor, Trinity ESC, and an Exalt servo. And pretty much all the same things for his four-wheel drive including the plastic ring and pinion gears and the front and rear transmission, excluding the big battery he just runs the smaller 4400 mAh in the four-wheel drive. Also, according to Kyle, the most important parts of the whole package would be the titanium screw kit, plastic internal gears in the case of the four-wheel drive, and in the case of the two-wheel drive, cut transmission gears, along with internal ceramic bearings. Talon runs very similar parts on his TLR cars, with the only difference being he runs an aftermarket chassis and very stiff plastics that TLR makes called Stiffazel. This is very similar to the carbon plastics you get from factory team for associated vehicles. This stuff is stiffer and lighter than stock plastics, but also more brittle, so if you get into a bad crash, like I said before, it's going to break. According to Talon, the main things you'll want to get will be the stiff plastics and the screw kit are pretty much necessary if you want to be competitive. Whereas other upgrades to your car like white leg gears, ceramic bearings, and all the other upgrades that I've mentioned before should come with experience. With all these upgrades, hop-ups, and replacement parts, at a certain point you start to look at these cars as completely different animals compared to what you get out of the box. And it almost makes you think that they should make sort of like a factory team version or a light version of these cars to appeal to stock racers. This has been done before with the TLR 22 5.0 SR or Spec Racer and the B6.1 Lite. However, the only company that still practices this is Schumacher with the LD3 stock spec. Even then, the stock spec is more made for indoor carpet and turf, not dirt. Personally, I think that with stock being as big as it is in the United States, and considering how different a stock car is to a mod car, Team Associated making a B6.4 light with titanium turnbuckles and screws and light and transmission gears wouldn't exactly be a bad move in my opinion. For stock racers, it would drastically reduce the amount of work needed to complete a stock car, and less parts would end up being thrown away. Another idea that has floated around a bit is the idea of running a spec class where you can only use what's included in the box no hop-up parts allowed. Others say that we should go back to the 1500 gram weight limit to make it easier for people with not as deep pockets to compete if they don't have all the necessary hop-ups. 
Now whether or not stock should be changed in any way from where it is now is debatable, but I'd like for you to debate that in the comment section below. Do you think stock is as good as it is, does it need to be changed, or should we have a whole other class? That's all for now. If you guys like this video and like to see more videos like it, be sure to hit the like button and comment below as to whether or not you actually enjoyed this format. Also, subscribe to the channel if you find yourself coming back from time to time. Also, if you want to fund my crippling addiction to RC car racing, you can subscribe to my Patreon, where I post updates and teasers as to when my videos are going to come out. Speaking of which, I'd like to thank my patrons Michael Williams, RC World Discord server, Casey Nix, Ben Reeves, Dave Armstrong, Joe Jenkins, Rob Bettingfield, Caden Merckx, Ian Petrie, Spiro Harvey, Logan Judkins, and especially Morrison Watt. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.